Uh, all right, so we are recording. So uh, a very good afternoon or evening officially to everyone. Uh, if you are somewhere in Europe, if you are anywhere else in the planet, good morning or <laughs> I hope you are having a nice noon. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, my name is Ioannis. I am the academic director of SEMS here in GSOM, the Graduate School of Management in St. Petersburg State University. And today I have my, it's my true pleasure and honor to have uh, my best friend, uh, Mr. Panagiotis Rumeliotis, Panos, uh, in short, who is, uh, Pano, please correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, the group brand manager of Europe at Colgate Palmolive. Uh, and uh, Panos, uh, apart from a good friend, he's truly one of the most hardworking and intelligent people I have ever met. Uh, and uh, I, it's, it's really exciting to have him here with us today to share his own experience with regards to career development, a quick overview of the FMCG sector, and then maybe have an open discussion on how the pandemic affected our lives. And more important than anything, to be able to share you know, his experience with the students and get some discussion going on. So Pano, thank you so much for being here with us today. I really appreciate it. And uh, just to remind everyone, feel free to jump in to write any questions. Victor is going to be the major, uh, you know, uh, lead in uh, moderating the discussion. So if you want, you can send questions to Victor or, you know, Victor, uh, I think we can be a bit relaxed, but it's up to you to manage it better. Yes, I think everybody can post their questions into the chat or contact me directly or even speak up yourself, especially if we are not too many people. I think it's all possible. So, yeah, it's all fine from my side. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So, uh, Pano? Yes, I'll take over. Thank you so much for your kind words, uh, John. It's my really my pleasure of being here and uh, try to, to help uh, uh, answer as many questions as possible. Uh, indeed, my role, my role currently is a uh, group brand manager uh, responsible for software for Europe uh, in Colgate Palmolive. Um, for you to know, Colgate Palmolive is a US company, uh, a leading uh, FMC, FMCG, uh, top 50 uh, in uh, the US uh, stock market. Uh, we, we have leading brands with uh, uh, like Colgate, of course, which is uh, our name and our most important with a huge uh, penetration um, and in this uh, territory, it uh, ranks uh, among the uh, five biggest uh, brand in the world within penetration, as it uh, has more than uh, one billion of uh, consumers each year. Uh, but also, uh, we operate in many other uh, categories, uh, like uh, cleaners with Ajax and Lacroix in France, uh, 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 soft tennis where I'm responsible with uh, Supreme or Suavitel in uh, Latam uh, in uh, body care with uh, palm olive that probably you may know as most of you are uh, within the Russia territory uh, in body wash, uh, bar soaps, uh, etc. And uh, Sanex also in Europe, but also uh, numerous uh, other brands across the world. So uh, a lot of categories uh, in the FMCG, FMCG and uh, uh, more in the home care, um, uh, personal care categories and many brands. Um, so I would think, uh, however, it's more important to, to share a few thoughts and uh, facts about uh, how, I, uh, how my career has evolved. Uh, I would say that I am a, a fully commercial uh, department uh, child. Uh, I've started on sales, and this is the, the first thing I would like to note here. Uh, I was uh, on the field when I started my uh, career. Uh, so the way we operate in FMCG is uh, having customers from uh, the retailers, the retail environment, usually supermarkets and now other areas are being also uh, developed, but our main uh, customer is, uh, is our uh, retailers across the world. So it might seem funny, it might seem difficult how uh, a person with, uh, you know, from uh, uh, a financial university with an MBA uh, can choose to, to start from sales. However, it's my first and most important uh, advice I can give to anyone. You should try working in sales. It's the best experience you can get. It's the most important uh, how to say, department within a company. It's the actual uh, generation of revenue. And uh, it's extremely valued also 
the fact having this experience uh, within the commercial departments, but also overall the, orga of the organizations. You cannot imagine how important it is. <clears throat> and also personally, uh, the things that you will learn, you will encounter, that you will see how the actual sales it, it's taking place. It's uh, a learning, a, a study you can never uh, get uh, uh, no other way around. So this is the first thing I would like to, to share with everyone. Uh, and bear in mind, the sales department are huge. Currently, they're the biggest, uh, uh, how to say, uh, people are driving uh, departments of the organizations. So the opportunities are numerous, career-wise. <clears throat> it's difficult, it's strange, but have it on the back of your mind. <clears throat> so I started on sales on the field uh, for some years. Then I move on uh, to what we call the back office sales. Uh, I worked as a key account manager, which is also a very important uh, part of the organization where the negotiations with the retailers are taking place, a huge learning as well. Extremely important, not only regarding the actual knowledge of the business, but especially in developing competencies like uh, uh, negotiating or uh, handling uh, risk. And uh, you may have, I don't know, if, do you have uh, any studying about uh, sales on your team <clears throat> within the, the university? Usually, usually our focus is mostly, Panos usually our focus is mostly on marketing rather than sales itself. And this is something that I wanted to ask, ask you in a very honest manner. What do you think? You are a salesperson, right? You are a salesman. What do you think about the marketing department and how do you view this connection between sales and marketing? Now, there's no, usually, the, you know, the, there is a, a, a uh, a notion of uh, fighting because, uh, between the two departments. Because let's be honest, eh? I will be totally honest. As I said, I work in commercial departments. Practically, those uh, those two are the most important teams uh, within the organization. They, they, they are getting the highest salaries. They have the, the, the biggest uh, opportunities in developing. Uh, those are the, the revenue uh, driving uh, uh, departments of the companies. So th the, those are... Uh, Yes, uh, those are uh, uh, what I'm, I, I would like to say the most important. They uh, are competing, but once they manage to work together, this is a key factor of success. <clears throat> I, I will not choose because uh, honestly, after five years of sales, I moved to marketing uh, and I stayed there for, uh, uh, for various reasons. I believe that the knowledge that you can get from uh, marketing, from actual marketing departments is invaluable. Uh, while uh, in sales, you it's more about uh, developing uh, skills and uh, competencies, while in marketing, apart from obviously developing skills and competencies, you can really uh, uh, develop also your knowledge of how the business is actually being done. So this is a choice that has to do with uh, what one wants to do with their own career. Uh, <clears throat> I have to say that sales for me uh, is a much more safe choice in terms of uh, uh, a work-life balance and uh, having an extremely well salary for the time spent. <clears throat> and, and Pano, how about career development? Uh, you know, sales is uh, is important in career development. For example, you know, we have many students that they like finance, right? They're really good in finance. You know, hard skills with finance. And uh, you know, and they really want they really want to go into banking because that's where the money is. So. Uh, that's a totally different sector. I, I have to be honest. I'm talking about uh, the sectors that has to do with uh, big corporation of MCG, uh, food industry, beverages. So I'm talking about uh, these territories. In these territories, commercial departments uh, are by far the most important ones. Uh, all other departments are considered supportive. Obviously, even within such organizations, if you're extremely good at uh, finance, obviously there are extremely high positions that you can get with knowledge and development opportunities. Still, I'm talking about numbers here. So the people uh, working and the, uh, the resources uh, allocated there are much uh, uh, vast, I would say. Uh, the banking sector, it's something totally different. Uh, you have to, however, you have to understand that um, the opportunities there lie in very specific uh, territories and areas. And one needs to uh, take the decision to which extent he's mobile or not. Fantastic. Victor? And the same, so the, yeah. the same applies, however, for, for our uh, uh, sector as well. Eh? So if someone uh, is not mobile, sales would be an exceptional choice. If he is mobile, 
a marketing or uh, maybe finance could be a much better choice. So it has to do with uh, the internal balance that someone has with uh, and the priority that he has with himself and his uh, family and uh, uh, what he wants to do, how he envisions himself after some years. Uh, now, if I, I move on and uh, move away from this dispute, the next, uh, the, 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 after uh, my years in sales, I did the next step, which was uh, what we call intermediate. Possibly you've seen it when you start uh, looking at uh, positions in this sector. Uh, within my company, we call it trade marketing. You may see it as uh, customer market. You may see it as uh, retail marketing. Now, what is this? This is uh, the position that supports uh, the field force and uh, the sales with more um, with the arsenal to really deliver the uh, their work in the optimum way. It's not brand management, but uh, supportive department of the actual sales. <clears throat> For instance, let me make uh, let my myself clear. Uh, in my uh, sector, in the sector that I work in FMGG, uh, a huge um, a part of uh, the revenue driven. Uh, is uh, 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 is driven by uh, by promotion. I don't know if you are acquainted with this situation. <clears throat> Unfortunately, for us, uh, most of the markets that we operate is a high low market, so practically having huge uh, high nominal prices, and uh, the volume is driven by uh, the very uh, steep and uh, uh, aggressive, I would say, promotion. Uh, there is a whole uh, number of people in the department that works on defining the optimum mechanism that can deliver these uh, results. Uh, so this is, and this is a, one part of the job. There is a huge, uh, uh, how to say, science of how uh, an optimum self within the retailer can be built, which products will go on the eye level, uh, spacing, etc. <clears throat> All these are uh, being done by what we call customer or uh, retail or trade market. Uh, this is another department that's extremely interesting with huge knowledge that someone can get. I don't know if anyone has uh, within uh, this group has ever worked in such an organization. Um, personally, I have not, but uh, it's quite interesting. And um, you already touched up on many questions that the students gave uh, to me in advance. And um, I also wanted to ask one more time, like uh, what advice can you give to young graduates who aspire to start a career in brand management? I heard already from you that you say, okay, yes. you should definitely start in the sales department. Yes, and I would, I would start with that. I mean, uh, because it's something nice to rule out if you are uh, fit for it. It's, an, uh, it's a very nice experience to take the beginning, you know, you are more fresh, uh, you are, how to say, more flexible into taking... Uh, uh, difficult situations rather than being, uh, you know, as we get always uh, older, we, 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 are, we are shaping our own behavior, we are shaping, uh, uh, we're getting more difficult, let's say, into uh, uh, discussing, negotiate. So uh, it's better to, to take the, the hard way once uh, you are younger and uh, more easy to, uh, to learn and eager to show stuff. So this is what I would do. This is what I did. I consider it a good choice. If someone wants to, to work on commercial departments, even if he doesn't want to work on commercial departments, it's worth spending one year, one and a half in sales and then decide if he likes it, if he wants to uh, move on to another department or another sector. <clears throat> and please bear in mind, that each sector, each company is different. They may have a different culture that fits him better. It's a good thing to try things. Uh, I have changed, uh, I'm working now 14 years, I have changed almost eight positions within the same organization because I felt that it fits me. In parallel, I have done many interviews uh, in other companies and uh, that was a very nice way to test the waters, whether I can find the company that fits me better. Obviously, I have been discussing with friends, with uh, co-students uh, you know, uh, co in university or MBA. It's crucial to understand also the culture of another corporation or another work of another sector to understand what fits you well, because you and the company uh, are being shaped. It's like a, a relationship. Uh, you know, you enter into a company and it's like getting married. You, you need to understand if it fits you, not only if you can fit uh, within the organization, because if it the, the culture, the people, uh, you know, uh, the way that job is being done, if it doesn't fit you, 
you need to find another uh, company. I was really curious about that point because I think nowadays um, many people change the companies even like every two, three years. So I was quite impressed that you stayed 14 years with the same company. So it was interesting to hear. Every person values different things in life. Huh? Obviously, it can be the salary. It can be the co working conditions. Uh, I think that uh, you need to find, obviously, with some compromises, as always in life, uh, a nice uh, intermediate solution in everything. Uh, uh, and especially in such a relationship, uh, like the working relationship that can fit you and you can see yourself after five or uh, you know 10 years. It's not a good thing also changing every three or four years. And that's my point of view. Uh, it, it's worth changing three or four times in your life, but I wouldn't change uh, more than that. Can, can I, uh, Victor, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I have also a question. Okay, there was just one more question also about like hard and soft skills when it comes to like brand management and being a brand manager. If you have some specific ones that you would point out as uh, especially important. Uh, I think that uh, it uh, it doesn't make a, a huge difference the department or the company uh, or, or about the, the source skills uh, uh, you need to develop. I think that uh, negotiating, uh, building relationships, uh, you know, working within a team um, are, are crucial because uh, if you manage to foster an environment when everyone can uh, cooperate in a, a very open and supportive way, uh, this will for sure help you and whenever you change a position in company there's a, a huge induction period that can vary from one to six months where you don't know where you're uh, going in, in this period you will need people to support you no matter how organized someone uh, a position is or a company is if you don't have the people that will support you and help you understand the roles the processes uh, and when you take you do something wrong uh, if if you uh, um, uh, start a blame game, it's a failure. It will lead nowhere. So creating uh, relationships, uh, I think, and it's not very difficult to happen, but uh, you need to, to, to train yourself not to think in a, uh, a blame way. Why this happened? Whose fault is it? Uh, it's uh, the thinking the other way around. Yes, something is wrong. This is a problem. How can we solve it? This is a, a huge change of mindset that will allow, however, the relationship to be built and having a team of people that can support you is uh, a huge uh, asset you can have. <clears throat> Apart from that, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, and that has to do with the sales uh, thing, is not taking anything wrong. Every challenge, every difficulty is an opportunity of growing yourself, growing your skills, growing your knowledge. And if you see it like that, being optimistic, being, you know, uh, positive, uh, then you can understand that everything that life will throw you, you will get something. Yeah, very interesting. Maybe also as you touched upon it, how failure comes up in this uh, way. Um, we had a question, if you could like maybe share a story where you experienced uh, or you heard about it, maybe where brand management went very wrong, where there was this sort of fail, let's say. Well, I, I have uh, numerous examples of uh, failures. Uh, failure is, is an everyday life. And uh, the, the, I mean, uh, I, I just had the, today a failure. For instance, now uh, in my role that, uh, as I mentioned, I'm working in marketing, uh, I keep part of my uh, uh, role is uh, to, to develop the, uh, the innovation for uh, uh, each year. So develop innovation can uh, be, you know, obviously you have support of uh, different departments, uh, R&D, and uh, that are developing uh, formulas that uh, can help you have uh, new news. As I mentioned, in the software category, this is a category with, let's face it, with uh, not uh, uh, the most highly innovative uh, formulation that can come. But uh, in any case, we try to find ways to, to bring new news uh, uh, to our consumer in order to drive consumption, penetration, and of course, pricing. And we have skipped all these uh, things I see here that we should touch, but in any case. <clears throat> so uh, we are building a, a new concept that can bring new news and uh, drive uh, premium innovation. Uh, we have been working for in this uh, territory um, 
almost six months now this. Uh, after a lot of thought, we, we have obviously done consumer tests uh, inside uh, and uh, have been working on the trends of uh, the category. <clears throat> Uh, today we run the no we have been running the last month uh, the consumer test we got the results and uh, finally all the code on the concepts we have built scored lower uh, uh, than what we have right now. As you can understand, this practically means that uh, what all the work done uh, we cannot uh, uh, take this and have uh, a successful story. <clears throat> so what do we do now? Are we gonna cry? No. Are we gonna say to, to our bosses, uh, it's a failure? Of course not. We are going to take from the study what is working, go back to the lab, uh, go back to the design the table, take all the things that have been working, uh, take from the insights that we got from the previous, uh, let's say concepts that uh, were scoring high and uh, obviously reward them in order uh, to make it happen. Uh, obviously, and don't take me wrong, at the moment you get the news, you get totally destroyed, totally frustrated. But that's life, that's uh, what happens. You get bad news, you work around it, you find a way to make it happen. Can I, can I also ask uh, a relevant question, following on what Victor and uh, Pano said, you know, uh, I remember some of our uh, private discussions, uh, Pano, uh, with regards to young employees that maybe are not so resilient or maybe they are not so experienced or maybe that they have, you know, some certain sensitivities on feedback, right? On when you give feedback to, you know, young employees on how they process it, how they take it on board. So maybe you can give us some sort of advice or enlighten us on how I, as a young employee, you know, uh, improve your skills and competencies on a soft level yes. in order to move forward. Soft, uh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> getting feedback is extremely difficult because it's uh, it's it's very. Um, but also giving feedback is possibly the the, uh, the uh, exactly the, the, uh, as difficult. Uh, it, I would say that reflection is the best way. I mean, every day every night let's say you should spend 10 minutes reflecting uh, and you can do it even now reflecting on 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 your day uh, if you don't reflect i mean and by reflect i mean start thinking about what went wrong and what went right during your day you had the test huh? uh, and so uh, you may had uh, i don't know uh, a lecture that you liked uh, please start thinking uh, how i uh, reacted on this how did I respond? It? Or did I respond correctly? Um, and it's a very good thing. I mean, you, you, we need to train ourselves daily. And if it's not daily, uh, periodically, in the way we uh, react, in the way we handle situations, uh, because you know, it, uh, what some the feedback that someone uh, gives you, most probably you have felt it or you know it. Uh, the fact is that you cannot accept it. So if you start doing this small exercise uh, with yourself, five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, you know, driving uh, after work or uh, being, uh, I don't know, in the bathroom and reflecting on what has been uh, done correctly, what seems to be working. Uh, it's quite easy to start uh, thinking around what I, have, I could have done better. Uh, and it's not, as, as I mentioned, it's not a blame game. Every difficulty is an opportunity to really become better. And all, we all fail from time to time. We, we all do mistakes and no one is perfect. If you take the opportunity of, uh, of uh, a failure to become better, uh, that's success. And uh, trust me, if someone gives you feedback, the worst feedback, he cares about you. Yeah, so, so you find it extremely hard to give feedback to people, but usually what is, what is the, the reaction you get when you give feedback to your employees? I mean, uh, uh, especially from young people, and what would you yeah. advise them to do? Yeah, I, mean, uh, I have uh, different occasions, uh, and it's uh, different people have uh, different reactions. Uh, uh, I, I have had uh, the chance of uh, people shutting down. Um, I mean, uh, not uh, listening to a word I'm saying because uh, they reject uh, the feedback up front. 
And this is the most common uh, uh, reaction to feedback. This is what happens usually. Uh, and it's not only about uh, young people. I mean, I have been in the same position when I was younger. Uh, until I, I found out that someone uh, that gives you feedback is actually interested in you because he's trying to, to, uh, to make you uh, become better in what you're doing. It's the easiest uh, thing to say, all good, go on. Uh, trying to understand what is not working, what could be better, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, I think, uh, extremely important. And uh, 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 taking feedback, uh, you should value the most. Uh, and I think that the problem with um, um, the, the younger generation uh, is not so much about getting feedback, it's about being impatient. And uh, uh, this is what, when I started uh, discussing about uh, uh, my um, experience in sales, uh, this is the big difference that I had. I was patient enough to spend uh, two, three years in sales in a, a position that uh, one could argue that was below my um, my skills at that point. However, the, the lesson I got, uh, the knowledge, the skills that I got was invaluable for my future career. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Panos. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, dear Victor and dear all, uh, do we have any other questions or maybe we can move to the next topic of our discussion, but uh, the floor is to Victor and to the students. Well, there was one more question that we could fit in now, but I guess probably as well later, but um, I, I like the question quite much. Um, it was, uh, what is your view on the connection of uh, like the company brand or the product brand, the employer brand and also your own personal brand? Uh, for example, you mentioned that you were for 14 years already now at uh, Calgot, and so um, yeah, there must yeah. be a certain match, I guess. And do you have any special strategy managing your personal brand and aligning it with the employer brand and so on? Uh, I, I think I feel what you're saying. Uh, as I mentioned previously, I don't like changes personally so much, but uh, it's crucial when you decide when you're going to work to really uh, make a choice of a company that you take pride in. Uh, it's a crucial factor because this will help you when uh, things get ugly and they will get ugly. Eh? You will uh, get a fight with a coworker. Um, results may be bad or uh, suboptimal or uh, below what you thought it were. Uh, you might miss a promotion. Huge. There could be numerous of uh, reasons. If you take pride in what you do, uh, if you feel the, the, the emotional connection uh, to the brand, to, to the company, to, to, to the values, uh, then it's much more easy to handle. If uh, you're not connected, then, um, you know, uh, uh, it's much more easy to, for people to leave and uh, uh, change uh, um, uh, work or uh, being uh, disconnected uh, from their team. And again, I'm all about relationships. I believe that it's extremely important uh, feeling that uh, you above uh, the eight hour relation with your co-worker, there is something more. Uh, and there is uh, the, the HR uh, department role extremely important to, to create the value uh, that uh, can bring this uh, team together. I don't know if I managed to, to explain it. It's not so much personal. It has to do uh, with the values of uh, the company itself and uh, uh, possibly smaller companies, smaller organizations that don't have uh, such a, a long uh, tradition, it's very difficult to develop. Uh, this is why, um, uh, and I don't have the experience of uh, smaller companies, uh, it's, uh, it's a, uh, a very competitive uh, advantage of uh, large organizations. They, they have the, uh, the knowledge to create these values, this, um, this mindset of uh, uh, engagement. Thank you very much. I like the answer very much. And uh, if no student has a question now, or a different student, then maybe we can move on, I guess. So uh, let's move to more practical things I can take you through. Now, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we are in the personal care, home care categories. Uh, these are, uh, are categories that are extremely saturated, especially in Europe uh, the last years. I mean, they're flattish all the years uh, pro COVID and their flout is to declining, I would say. Uh, and that's quite easy because as you can understand the, the volumes of the category, the consumption, let's say, like this is, uh, uh, is quite stable. It, I mean, the population of Europe is not uh, really increasing. So uh, consumption is uh, defined practically only if you increase penetration that again, 
uh, it's at high level, so it's very difficult to increase. And then the other uh, factor is pricing, which again in Europe, <clears throat> given that we are already at the high uh, space, is very difficult to increase. You really have to bring uh, to bring in innovation that makes a difference to really drive pricing. And th th these are uh, difficult to all the companies, and uh, we very have uh, a very strong competition like uh, Procter and Gamble or Unilever that are also uh, colossal uh, companies, and we are all trying the same thing. So we, we're at that situation of uh, um, of categories that are stagnating, and we are all trying to to increase our categories, no, uh, our share of market, I would say, uh, through innovation and pricing. Now, all this last year changed, as you can understand, uh, because the COVID uh, uh, outbreak, at least to our categories, were beneficial. Uh, with people staying at home much uh, more. Also, we had uh, the, the once-off effect uh, of the pantry loading uh, of uh, the crisis. So, as you can understand, we're not in a situation that we can really compare. However, you can understand that uh, something that might seem as uh, uh, a, a catastrophe for us was a blessing in disguise. Is it true that it was the best year for Kogel Palmolive this year? No, 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 no. Uh, some years before the crisis, you know, the, and it has to do with pricing. And I don't know if you managed to, to discuss along uh, about uh, how price uh, effect, uh, affects uh, uh, results and however is, you will understand it once you start working, that is a crucial lever uh, of success. Okay, cool. And it's a very different, uh, you know, uh, this is another, I would say, <clears throat> uh, hint I would like to, to give it because I know that some of you might uh, going to startups and uh, not pass through the uh, FMCG or the corporation world, uh, you know, pricing is crucial and it's uh, extremely important for uh, a successful product uh, service to be able uh, to have a, a significant pricing that will allow uh, the margin of the product to be um, at high levels. So, Panos, you, you are, when you say pricing in the FMCG sector, Essentially, you mean a huge markup that allows you to have profit, or do you mean competitive pricing in order to gain a lot of mm. you know, market share in certain markets? Now, uh, the price structure uh, is is something uh, that is very different from company to company, from sector to sector. From uh, so, there's no common thing. When I say pricing, uh, is practically the price at which uh, you sell your products to your customer. This is uh, the optimal, but however, in our uh, uh, categories, it's really straightforward because uh, then there is practically the also the the part of pricing that is driven by the retailer until the end consumer, uh, which is another uh, part. However, um, those two are combined. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, also a crucial thing for you to know: I work in marketing. However, my financial skills are quite uh, good, and that was a huge plus. Uh, to be able to understand uh, how a simple uh, PNL profit and loss uh, uh, work, if you manage to master this uh, in your everyday life, it really uh, can be a, an invaluable asset uh, working in marketing, if you can believe that. Yeah, Panos, uh, you said before that maybe you can give us some uh, updates on the latest structure trends, yes. like Hubbing. And I think this would no. be valuable for anyone who wants to go in an interview with a, mm -hmm. uh, with a large FMCG company to understand how hubbing and the latest on structure is actually working currently. So that would be a huge plus for us. Sure, I mean, we're changing uh, topics uh, here, but I, I see that the time flies by with you. So that's a very nice thing. Uh, so let's uh, have this uh, brief session on, uh, on the structure. So uh, when I entered the company, uh, it was like 2006 and we had the normal um, textbook, I would say, structure, which was uh, in a multinational company having uh, a, a central, uh, for us it was, let's say, pan-European divisional structure that uh, offered the guidelines. And each country had their own full uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, and thus marketing and sales uh, uh, department. Uh, uh, and uh, while taking the guidance and directives from divisional, they were uh, pretty autonomous uh, in the way they handle uh, their uh, country marketing um, uh, strategy. So that meant having their own marketing director with the country uh, and uh, the category managers, with the, respectively had the brand managers 
and uh, it was pretty pretty autonomous this is how uh, the, the normal pyramid that you pr uh, probably have seen in your books uh, so uh, after 2010 the, there was a the new trend that uh, broke out uh, across uh, and it was uh, really extended across fmcg now i think that i cannot i i think only l'oreal from the big fmcg companies is not in this structure everyone else is there is what we call the hubbing. So the idea of the hubbing, <coughs> excuse me, is quite simple. Uh, is you is the fact of creating synergies uh, within um, um, entities that has uh, commonalities, uh, depending on on different things. Mainly, uh, uh, I would say more of uh, um, location or uh, uh, the same consumer habits and uh, uh, the the same. Uh, Many, many different. Uh, uh, can you give us an example? Can you give us an example of a hub? For instance, um, uh, in Colgate, uh, we did a hubbing uh, between uh, the North Europe countries, uh, where the consumer between uh, the Italian and Greek consumer have extremely uh, high commonalities, let's say, uh, in terms of communication uh, and uh, behavior. So, <clears throat> the, the marketing department among the big countries, Portugal, Italy, uh, Spain and Greece uh, was grouped in one entity, uh, one um, one organization uh, that practically serves all these countries. <clears throat> While and in uh, each local country, only uh, sales department was left. <clears throat> so this creates uh, big efficiencies, but at some uh, in the same um, way, I would say uh, also synergies uh, in the way the mindset of uh, the marketing department works, uh, but also you can have uh, a strong economies of scale. And then, so uh, what happens is having one division centrally, and then you group the countries in these hubs that serve the countries with commonalities, uh, creating like a, a web of a spider. Uh, this is the trend that uh, is currently happening from 2012, I think, all uh, across FMCG companies. Uh, this has changed a lot the work because uh, you working in marketing uh, makes you much more international. You you become much more expert in more than one countries in more markets, uh, and you need to combine, uh, create the synergies that will allow uh, this whole thing uh, to work. Were there any problems or turbulences with this hubbing approach during the pandemic now? Because we had this uh, time where some uh, borders were shut down and so on, or it was not such a huge problem? There were huge problems when it happened. Because, uh, you know, every uh, change is uh, extremely difficult to adapt. It uh, takes uh, some time and, and change uh, is continuous. It, it's always happening. That's what you know, this happened in 2012. I believe in five, 10 years, something else will come that will uh, change the whole uh, uh, approach of how the, uh, the structure will work. Still, uh, I mean, after the, the, the turbulence, as you mentioned, that happened in the beginning, for us, it took us more than three years until it really started working and deliver uh, the actual synergies uh, that the whole concept behind it uh, uh, was uh, planning to deliver. Uh, nowadays, no, I would say that uh, it's working the same way. <clears throat> Uh, I think that um, maybe we can cover it later on, um, but for some reason, the companies were quite ready to uh, to move to the work from home. We were ready. Uh, and this practically allowed everything to, uh, to, to keep working flawlessly. So uh, in terms of actual uh, working conditions, the, uh, the pandemic hasn't really affect, uh, affected our everyday life and uh, respectively, uh, we can, we could handle it. Not everything is simple. I mean, going to the office uh, allows uh, some room or some, uh, I mean, you can face it yourself. Huh? It's a much different situation being uh, with your professor, with your uh, uh, co-students. It's the same for us having a virtual meeting. It's much more difficult and different than having a, an actual physical meeting. You miss uh, the body language. Uh, you miss the attention. Uh, it, it's uh, it's a little difficult. Uh, having a virtual workshop uh, takes five to ten minutes until everything is set and everyone is really there. 
on the other one, uh, you know, you, you spare the time uh, commuting. So there is some benefits. There are some uh, side effects. For me, working in an FMC company, the fact that I'm not able to actually see the product that I'm delivering to the market is also a big change of my work. Uh, but, uh, you know, we are adapting. Everything is happening. You, you, you need your, to, to, com to have uh, some compromises in everyday life. But uh, I think uh, uh, we are coping with it. And uh, what do you believe those uh, changes that happened now also during the pandemic, which one of them will stick and which one will revert back once uh, maybe the vaccine rolls out and we are getting back to uh, our normal life, let's say? The working conditions, I think that uh, now the, it, it will change forever. The way we are doing uh, uh, our work will change forever. Uh, the nine to five, uh, five days per week uh, in the office or in the factory or wherever, this will change forever. Uh, I think everyone has understood now that this is not needed. It's ideal. I mean, um, you, you miss uh, the social uh, 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 contact, let's say, with, uh, which is also extremely important. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we will find ourselves uh, somewhere in the middle. Uh, there are some benefits, you know, you don't, I practically have not wear a shirt. I see Yanis with his shoes, but I haven't wear uh, my shoes for like uh, almost six months now. And this is a huge difference. It's only from the, from the, from the waist up. From the waist you don't want to know up, that? It's my pajamas. <laughs> wish, uh, wish I missed that, but okay. Uh, but obviously you can understand there are huge differences uh, in how you work. Huh? I mean, uh, we were clean cut, uh, shaving uh, every day. Uh, now it's more than accepted, uh, uh, more acceptable to to have, you know, some uh, some kind of beard. Uh, simple things. However, uh, you can see how uh, life is changing. Uh, traveling, it's a huge difference. Uh, I mean, uh, I was traveling uh, twice per month. I haven't traveled for six months, and you know you. You miss something, you get something. Also, and uh, this is uh, you know much more efficient in terms of timing, but also in terms of cost. There is a huge cost that uh, can be attributed to to different uh, areas uh, from all these uh, changes. Uh, but uh, we will see how when we get out of this, uh, because we may have the benefit of time, we may have the benefit of cost. We are missing uh, the personal touch. I, 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 I discussed a lot in the beginning about values and uh, the culture of a company. It's difficult to develop a culture and values through screen. This is done through relationships. This is done with uh, you know, uh, personal um, uh, contact. Absolutely. So um, this is an aspect that obviously cannot be uh, assessed at this point that we are you know, only one a year. But, uh, working from home one or two or three years obviously will have, a, to my personal point of view, this is uh, a negative effect uh, in very crucial elements uh, of uh, mindset, of uh, culture, of uh, values. Nice. Nice. So uh, thank you very much, Pano. Any other questions uh, from anyone? Uh, Victor, maybe you have received any questions. Uh, I can see a few people with their cameras on, and thank you for that. Joe, Eleonora, maybe you want to ask anything, if you want to. Um, I mean, Vic, Victor asked a couple of my questions that I, I sent in already, uh, but I was just curious. You said about you were traveling like twice a, twice a month. Did, are you able to kind of get away quite a lot normally in your role? To get away, you mean? Like you said you were traveling like twice a month. I'm just curious about your job. Are you still able to go traveling quite a lot? No, no, I don't travel at all. Uh, the last travel I had was uh, in my previous position when I, I mean, business traveling, that is, uh, that I was still working. Uh, as I mentioned, I was talking about the hub. I was working in uh, Greece, but uh, I was responsible for the uh, South Europe hub. And the last uh, travel I did was in Italy that I was responsible for uh, right before the outbreak. After that, and I moved to my new position in uh, Switzerland, I did the move. And apart from that, I haven't been able. And, uh, you know, at this point, uh, no company, no serious company is uh, uh, really uh, eager to undertake any responsibility of uh, 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 their own uh, um, uh, personnel uh, getting the virus within the work uh, uh, timings. 
nice cool thank you thank you very much right okay so if uh, no extra questions I haven't covered. I haven't covered the, the real change of omni-channel marketing. However, it's a huge uh, topic okay. that you can uh, you can do it at a, another time. You know the, how uh, now marketing reality is really changing. It has been changing for uh, numerous years now. Uh, I mean, top uh, some top numbers I had was the fact that even in 2018, um, the 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 digital screens surpassed. TV screens. Uh, 2020, for the first year, uh, the the global digital uh, advertising investment surpassed television TV investment, which is a, a crucial threshold. Uh, another figure that I think it's extremely important. Uh, before COVID, the average uh, time that uh, was spent on digital was three hours. Do you know how it, how much it is now after COVID? Something disgusting. <laughs> yes, I I don't know if it's disgusting, but it's reality. It's six point fifty nine minutes, so practically seven hours on uh, digital. So we have seen a huge explosion. I mean, this was a trend happening uh, all these years, but uh, the COVID outbreak really changed the work we are doing, and that has to do with you, uh, and you marketeers. We I noted uh, in the topics. Uh, we are moving to omnichannel. We cannot. I mean, it's extremely difficult to build brands now. Because uh, up until uh, 2000, uh, a very good uh, TV commercial and a huge investment was more than enough to build a brand, to build a, a, a variant. Now it's impossible. You really need to go omnichannel to hit uh, all the touch points in order to really make it, and this requires a huge investment that uh, it's very difficult to to justify. Uh, also, the the consumer is changing. Your your new generation is much more different than. What me and John or the previous generation was, uh, you are you you want customization, personalization. You want to feel that uh, the brand really talks to your language, and this is extremely difficult because there are so many touch points now. Uh, so I, I can talk for hours if you want for this. However, a, uh, a topic that uh, uh, you you should take from here is that you need to be up to date uh, to what is coming. Everything is changing so fast. I got my TikTok downloaded, uh, you know, the previous week because I need to understand what is TikTok. Uh, you you have to speak the the language uh, of your consumer. And uh, how do you manage to do this, for example, when when we are talking about some trend like TikTok now? Is it uh, very difficult? Also, I guess in your department, maybe it, you are you looking especially for young people to cover the social media part, or how do you approach that? Yes, I mean that, that that's uh, a good uh, approach. I mean, uh, usually you you bring in uh, uh, respectively um, uh, uh, people that ca can uh, that that have uh, that have affinity. Uh, to the target group, it's much more easy to do. Eh? I mean, for me, it's much more difficult to to be able. I need to do it as well, so as to speak the same language. However, uh, that is um, a good point. How you need to understand, Victor, um, the opportunities and limitations. Eh? Because if you have a three-person marketing and you already have it covered, what are you going to do? You're going to fire someone to get? get that's not possible. So. Um, I think that it's more uh, important for us as individuals to try and uh, be updated. And obviously, if you see that uh, you cannot cover the need uh, with uh, the resources that you have to really understand if it's feasible to, to integrate uh, uh, some someone uh, more uh, a specialist. <clears throat> However, what I want to close is what you learn in this uh, um, Uh, subject in this uh, topic, it's a very good, it's a very good uh, um, basis uh, to really form your mindset. However, you need to have your ears, your eyes open to understand what is coming, uh, how things are uh, evolving, uh, and uh, really follow all the trends. Uh, it's a constant uh, trip to knowledge. Can I ask, one, uh, dear Victor, do we have any other questions before I make the last one? Because we have eight minutes left for our meeting, and it's already late for all of you, so I don't want to. We covered most of the questions that we received from the students. I think from this side we are done right now, unless somebody comes up spontaneously now. Okay, fantastic. So, 
if no question, I can ask one last question. Fano, you are very experienced uh, when it comes to career in FMCGs. So if you are to give one last final piece of advice to our students, even before they graduate, right? So they are now studying in this international management. Uh, we can have students from many degrees actually now here with us. But what would be, you know, your advice to our students, even before they graduate, in case they want to pursue a career in, you know, FMCGs, what would you advise them to do now? I mean, when I say now, I mean, even from tomorrow, in order to start building up their skills portfolio or their, you know, uh, attitude or their knowledge towards that career? What yeah. would you say? Yes, uh, I would uh, I would uh, urge them to to be more open in terms of reading about brands, reading about uh, uh, you know go to the supermarket and check the shelves. Uh, try to you know to be pragmatic. You don't really need to to know everything, but uh, showing uh, that you understand and you have uh, an interest uh, on how it works and what uh, um, uh, I think it's more than enough. Uh, the, the, the actual knowledge of the business will come. They, they, they will provide it to you uh, once you get there. Having an interest on the brands, however, and how um, uh, the, the whole economy around FMCG works uh, is more important. Uh, actually, and be honest with yourselves on what you want to do. <laughs> I mean, you really need to, to start thinking, am I mobile? Do I want to have a family? Uh, do I want to work uh, late hours? Uh, if you are sincere with yourself, uh, I mean, because if you get to it and um, then all the personal limitations show up, uh, it will not work for both. It will not work for the company. It will not work for you. So this is this is this is a bit surprising. So you have to make a choice if you want to make a family or not. I mean, it, it depends on uh, uh, if. Uh, no, I mean, uh, it's not about choice. Uh, if you want to do a, a, a very uh, elaborate career, uh, or mobile career, uh, it's much more difficult uh, to, sure. to have a family. You, and you really, I mean, obviously everything can be handled, eh? but uh, planning is uh, crucial, I think, to my point of view, on when you want to do it. Yeah, 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 you're absolutely right. But uh, you mentioned another thing, the Panos, working long hours. You know, you have to make a choice if you want to work long hours. Uh, allow me to elaborate a little bit on that. I don't think there is a choice whether you can work long hours these days. I think it's, you know, <laughs> in one way a street to follow, but, but it's more about accepting it and processing it, right? It's about being in good terms with that or what is something I didn't get? I disagree on this. I disagree. Okay. You you can always make choices. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, obviously, uh, you cannot uh, go to a company and say, I'm going to do that. But you can choose the company or the sector or the position. Uh, and uh, even within a huge um, corporations, uh, uh, if you want to pursue a, uh, a very elaborate career, obviously, you need to sacrifice some things like your uh, ease. And uh, it's not going to happen that easy. Uh, unless you are, uh, you know, I mean, uh, a, a nature's wonder and uh, hopefully you are within our uh, group. However, you need to sacrifice something. Nothing is uh, coming for free. Uh, so it's it's about, I, I really think, uh, I really believe it. You, you cannot find the, the recipe from day one, eh? but after you spend one year, two years, you see how other companies uh, are behaving, how your co-students and it's extremely important to have a good alumni and a good relationship with uh, people uh, of uh, the same uh, age, um, how to put it uh, more politely, um, group, huh? uh, let's say, uh, so that you can understand how it's working because uh, you may think that something is normal, but it may not be. Uh, discussing, you might find uh, other routes more suitable for you. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much. I think this is really valuable advice. Networking, having your ears open, making the right choices, understanding whether you, if you don't know where to go, to try, you know, for one and one and a half year sales, and then you will have a much better understanding of what you can do. So this is, I think, all very valuable. 
Panos, thank you so, so much for being here with us this evening. And before I close, just one last uh, time, if there are any questions, any last burning question, we still have a couple of minutes. Now is the time to ask for it. If not... So there, there was one more question. Okay. Um, as we were talking now also about this work-life balance and how much the workload is, uh, people were actually curious, how much do you, for example, work as a brand manager? Is it like Goldman Sachs investment banking kind no. of levels no. or no. how is it? It's not like this. I mean, I work on average approximately 10 hours, uh, but I, I consider myself that I'm giving uh, the extra mile. I mean, uh, it could be scaled down a little bit. I mean, it depends to which extent uh, you want to pursue. Uh, yourself, uh, there are in in having a career, you know, uh, work and result is not the only thing that uh, it's important. Networking, uh, how you put it, uh, uh, politics also play a role, and you will see it. Uh, uh, you see it when you start working. You you may find out the hard way uh, with a lot of frustration and uh, disappointment, but you need to adapt. Uh, and again, every company, every person is different. Uh, you need to understand uh, what works for you. Um, I'm telling you, it, it's not a golden rule that uh, the, the longest you work, you will be paid off. And uh, it's not the case eh? because you, you, you may end up uh, burning off and uh, really do it two, three, four years and then uh, uh, stop uh, or not being able to deliver. So you need to find a balance uh, within yourself. I, 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 what I mentioned in the beginning, try to reflect to understand what's working for you, if it makes sense, what are your objectives, uh, and what you're uh, um, are willing uh, to give for it. Um, That's fantastic. And, and if it's not working, yeah, try to understand from people around you what other choices you have. You're extremely young, everyone here, you have more time, many options. Uh, the world is changing, companies are changing. I mean, uh, in my age, uh, there were no startup uh, trend. You may, it, it might uh, work for you. You have so many uh, sectors that you can uh, uh, choose. So, uh, and uh, obviously now with uh, uh, with the web, you can really uh, try and uh, find out things that were not uh, as open and public in the past. You may search for reviews if you can trust them. Why not? Uh, and of course, networking, alumni, uh, always is an important uh, uh, thing that can help you in difficult times. Thank you very much. Very insightful answers. Fantastic. Very nice. Uh, and there's something you mentioned about politics, and maybe we need to bring you in another time to talk about politics inside companies, because this is also another very interesting topic. But uh, let's reserve it for later, yeah? Yes, it's not uh, as important topic uh, for me. However, you can understand easily. Everyone can understand uh, how it works. Okay. But, yes, but you are Spartan, you know, you are Spartan, of course. Politics is not, is not, is not your strong point. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's a reality of the world. It's a reality of the work. You can easily understand how it works. You can, if you, you work in teams, I, I guess, in having some uh, projects, uh, you, you can really understand. And it's an, important, it's an important skill to those who can have it. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. I, I think we are over the time, but I see one hand raised by Yaroslav. Maybe we give him the chance to speak if he wants. Yeah, thank you. I have a very short question. And uh, first of all, I want uh, to thank you for this uh, very interesting conversation. And uh, as regards my question, uh, maybe you can uh, recommend us uh, some sources uh, to get to know more about brand management that uh, maybe you particularly use or it may be some book or a business journal, whatever. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, I can share with uh, some journals uh, to Yanis. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not so. I'm not such a fan of books. I, I consider them that, unfortunately, uh, until the time they they are published, they are already three or five years uh, outdated from what the reality is. You need to to really now in the in the ages of uh, um, um, web. Uh, with journals, uh, you can really uh, get much more up-to-date knowledge. I, I can share with Yanis some uh, a couple of um, journals I, I have the chance to to read and uh, keep me updated. Uh, obviously, yeah, but, but don't take me wrong. You, you need to have uh, the fundamentals. You, you need to read Porter. First of all, you, you need to know Porter uh, 
uh, by hand and obviously uh, having this basis and uh, all the, the exceptional work. However, as I'm telling you, the, everything is changing so fast now uh, that uh, you need to, 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 to keep uh, yourself uh, updated with, uh, with uh, and uh, even uh, just um, uh, reading the web uh, keeps you in a good pace. Yeah, Yaroslav, this is a very yeah. good question. Feel free to drop me an email to remind me about that. And I can share some sources as well because we are in touch with Panos and uh, once he sent them to me, I can share also my sources as well. Uh, and uh, I, I drop me an email and I will reply back and we can share it with the world, the community here as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, fantastic. Cool, okay. So, uh, Victor, any last words before I do mine? Just thank you very much. It was very insightful. I think uh, it was a very interesting discussion. And um, also, if it was not the most structured always, we jumped with our questions a bit. But I think that was actually perfect because we got to cover everything that the students asked. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. And sorry for not being too structured, but uh, it was much more pleasant for me uh, doing it this way. I mean, it was like uh, an open discussion, uh, like seeing you face to face. Otherwise, it was like... a uh, um, uh, reading yeah. uh, uh, an essay with at any point I wouldn't want that to, to happen. Fantastic. So, Panos, uh, Victor, dear guests, thank you all so, so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this chat. We've learned some valuable lessons. Uh, we will follow up. We will share some sources. But if you have any other extra questions or when you reflect on this, please feel free to share with me. And I will speak with Panos uh, again and uh, give you his response back. Thank you all so much. Panos, once again, a huge, a huge thanks. I know you finished your last meeting today, right the moment before we started our chat. So that's why maybe the voice is, you know, getting heavier at this time. So I really, really appreciate it for being here with us. Thank you all very much and have a good rest. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Yeah, very much. Really Bye. 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 Bye.